Oh, Jev, here we go. We are back. So we are previewing every single side for the 2024 season. We're going to go in alphabetical order. We've just finished Adelaide. If you didn't miss, or if you missed the last one, we are now heading into Brisbane. Jeb, first episode was a cracker. Are you excited for the next? Oh, absolutely. I'm I'm excited about previewing Brisbane, and I went out a bit of a look and I answered the questions, and I'm pretty bullish on them, Das. I'm pretty bullish on them. What about you? Um, I've, I can't wait. I, I saw them up close and personal at the Gabba. They are a fucking good side. So yeah. let's get into it. So last year, Jeb, they finished second on the ladder. Obviously, runners up in the grand final, almost had it. Last couple of minutes, they finished 17 and 6. So that's a really good season. Obviously, we know they're incredible at home. Um, as you mentioned in the first episode, we have a list of questions for every side. Same questions we're going to go through and maybe a little take at the end. Uh, Jeff, we're going to start off competition A graders. Who do you see uh, the Brisbane Lions have? Oh, I wrote down Das, Lockie Neal, Charlie Cameron, and Harris Andrews. Yes, I've got them all as competition A graders rather than position A graders. Whether you agree with it or not, Lockie Neal is a two-time Brownlow medalist. He's in the upper echelon of midfielders. He's clean, he's tough, he's a fucking gun. Then Charlie Cameron kicked 59 goals last year, was an All-Australian again, and he's just one of the most feared players in the competition. And then the Harris Andrews one, I might be a bit biased or a bit over the top, but Harris Andrews is pretty fucking good. And you want to know who agrees with me on how good he is, Das? Craig McRae, because he brought Billy Frampton into the grand final side to tag Harris Andrews on the biggest stage. I reckon this offseason, they're going to find ways to let him dominate games even more. What about you? Who do you have Who do you have competition A graders, Das? I had all of them, Jeff. I had Lockie Neal, and the biggest one within that is his clearance work. There was a couple of games. The one game, the one game, who went to him? Took Miller. And yep. took it away from him. Yep. And it was more teams need to do it, but more teams don't have those players that can run and want to niggle. But, Jeff, contested possessions, 13.6 a game, which is elite, and also his clearance work, which is – he's pretty much getting eight clearances a game. Now, big thing in which we love to bet on is Charlie Cameron. Now, we don't get on him for disposals because the minimum you can get is 15. He's only averaging 10. Yep. 10 disposals a game, but Jeff, 2.3 goals a game, 58% in front of goal. He's, He's an absolute freak. And obviously up front, as you did say, Jeff, Harris Andrews, got to watch him live and personal. He intercepts. He's big. He's rangy. Um, I think he's a bit of a skirt sometimes and he pisses me off, but he's a very good footballer. There's only a few really good key position players. He's one of them. And what a spine, Jeff. You, you need yeah. a good spine if you're a good team and you got the midfield, you got a gun young forward or small forward and then a key defender. Position A graders. So we've got three competition A graders, position A graders. Who you got position A graders, Das? Moves a little bit inside to the midfield, but then outside. But Hugh McCluggage, if you're looking at a wing position in which you could draft, like Errol Goulden, like I know he plays midfield, but wing. Yep. Josh Dacos, wing. Hugh McCluggage, wing. Yep. That's it. Like a BC grader winger. You, oh, that's your C grade winger. You might put a Blake Akers. Yeah. That's sort of how you want to think of it. Hugh McCluggage can go inside when he has to. He sits on that wing nice and fat. He doesn't have to get sucked into the contest. And because Brisbane know that they can get it because of the depth of their midfield, we'll like touch on in a minute, they can get it out to him and he damages sides, Jeb. Who do you have as? So for this one, so we write position A graders. Then the next question is notable role players. I think Brisbane, when I think Brisbane, it's like they're nearly mixed into one. So Kitty Coleman, he's such a gun half back. Joe Danaher, 63 goals last year, three goals, 16 touches grand final day. Zach Bailey, Lincoln McCarthy, Cam Rayner, like they're like A grade role playing forwards that just dominate games and like they are just so good gun hard-working forward mids McCluggy McCluggage Josh Dunkley like these blokes are guns Starsevic is the bloke that plays on small forwards like it's the toughest role in the AFL their list is just absolutely stacked with that that sort of mix of position A grader and then notable role players I reckon at the line they're like mixed into one what did you have for notable role players to us yeah, you hit the nail on the head, Jeff. Almost a little bit like Adelaide. But with what this side does, if this bloke doesn't get you, he will. If yep. Danaher doesn't kick a heap of goals, Charlie Cameron will. Hitwood yep. will pick it up. Zach Bailey will pick it up. All these guys. But from defense, Kitty Coleman had an unbelievable back half of the year. Talk yep. about quarterback sort of seasons, Jeff. That is what he had. 
the amount of marks that he just takes coming back, he just puts the Dukes up, takes yep. it, settles them down, and then they reset. They're yep. lightning fast from defense. They go they go south to north faster than anyone. Yep. They go and they just want to run Get the legs the off. They will go Cameron. into the midfield and continue to go inside as many times as it can. It starts with him. He knows when to play off his man and sit in. He's almost becoming like an elite player from that position, but yep. – as a role player and what he's had to do to get a game in that side, first of all, he's a gun. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, who? Yeah, you go. Yeah, I, I thought it was me, but it was you. Yeah, young guns. Well, like young guns. Talk to me about their young guns, Das. Well, Jasper Fletcher was another father-son that came in towards the back end of the year that was playing quite well, pretty much – Got that little role of Ashcroft, but their main one is Ashcroft, Jev. Obviously coming off the ACL, kicked the goal of the year. He is an absolute 2IC for Lockie Neal. He's just, he genuinely looks like a lion, looks like a mascot. The way that he came out, most likely, well, he was the most touted player within that draft. Definitely the most famous coming out. Pretty much averaged 35 disposals in the whole NAB league for the it's entire so season. He's a freak. They definitely missed him within that grand final. Can you imagine that? the contest we could have got from him and Dacos yep. coming out. He's their number – they're their probably number two young guns. They've got a couple of other guys that are coming through, but they're the two that definitely stick out, Jeff. Yeah, I wrote – don't forget about Will Ashcroft. He's an absolute gun. He's going to be so good. And then the two kids they introduced to us like last year and gave them like that leg speed was Darcy Wilmont, Jasper Fletcher. They were both unbelievable and they've just balanced their team so well of – speed and youth and then they've got the old dogs they've got the forward line like they're just such a good list aren't they well yeah Darcy Wilson's from here uh, so um uh Darcy Wilmont's from here Sandy yeah. boy got picked up late and then got a game and pretty much just held on to his spot yeah like um it. what do you have as the depth Jeff? I don't know how you want to spin it. so this question depth with question marks spin it however you want yeah I just worry about their back line depth or their key back depth Darcy they would kill for one more big man down back with Harris Andrews. Sort of like how everyone knows how good Stephen May and Jake Lever is, but Adam Tomlinson's the actual one that plays on the gun forward and then they just go and chop him out. I reckon they'd kill for one more big gun defender with Harris Andrews. What did you write for depth? How, how many combinations you can get out of their midfield. Doesn't yep. matter. If they go through... Pick any of these combinations. I don't care how you want to put it. Dunkley, McCluggage, Neil, Zorko, Rayner can go in, Bailey, Berry, Ashcroft, Fletcher, and a few others can come through. But with that midfield and the way, it doesn't matter in what part of the ground it is, they can get numbers too, and they are very good stoppage side. So if they can get it, their numbers to the ball and spread, especially with how fast that they actually want to move the ball, they are virtually impossible to stop to an extent. But that amount of depth, if you look at where the game's played, it's at the footy. And if you've got good players within that that can play clearance football, that's why they win a lot of games, especially at home in the heat. They run teams off their legs. Absolutely. Uh, Dark Horse All-Australian, who you got for me? I reckon we might have the same answer here. We'll say it. We'll count it. Three, two, one, say it. Three, two, one. Kitty Zach Bailey. Oh, here we go. Oh, you go first Zach, then, you go first. Zach Bailey, Jev, he's a showstopper. He showed the grand final. Two unbelievable goals early in the game. We thought he was going to take that leap. Remember when they were zipping three two years ago and he had to play at Marvel and they're like, the Lions can't go zipping four. Yeah. Kick the goal off the siren at Marvel against Collingwood. He's an absolute freak, this kid. He's up there with any of those small forwards, but he's just a notch down. Just because he got so much firepower, yeah. you love to see him take the league by the scruff of the neck this year, up his numbers, a little bit more forward pressure, um, and then just try and convert as much as he can because he can get on the back of five, six goal hauls at any yeah. stage, He's all him quiet. and Charlie Cameron. But I think he could definitely have that role in the side and push himself for an All-Australian. What about you? Yeah, well, i got Kitty Coleman, half back of the All-Australian team. He can be anything. And you saw it up close at the prelim when you went up to the Gabba. Like, he can be absolutely anything, Carney. He? He's a good player. For sure. He's a freak. Um, what do you have for coach captain? How do yeah. you see they roll? Obviously, you've got Harris Andrews and Neil as well. I just feel like Lockie Neil, Harris Andrews, and Chris Fagan are just so aligned on winning the premiership. But is this Fagan's last chance? I heard Kane Corns come out and say on the radio, Chris Scott is the next coach of the Brisbane Lions. Take it to the bank. So maybe the feeling in the building is this is Fagan's last chance with this list. If he doesn't get it done this year, it might be his last year. But 
just like from a preseason perspective, and I can worry about that after the end of the year, it just feels like they're so aligned on the premiership. What have you got down for coach, captain? Yeah, well, it definitely helped. I think that they just got the two in the building. Um, but the way that Fagan's had this list, you almost think that, look, only one team can win at the end of the year, but they've put themselves in unbelievable position. Their last five years finishing on the ladder, second, second, fourth, sixth, and second. They've given themselves the best chance. And obviously yep. anything can happen on the day. Only one team can win. You can prepare everything, but at the end of the day, it's whoever can execute on on the game. Like who knows? He may have had the perfect game plan every time, but the players haven't done it. But yep. as you said, how many times can you continue to finish in that position without there being yep. consequences? Yep. I agree with you on that side. That was probably my question at the end, which I'll still go through. Yeah. But Jeff, it's if they don't get over the top, maybe you just need a breath of fresh air. You've had that list for a long time. Uh, def- they definitely work well. They know what works well. They win at home. They dominate sides. They get themselves in a good position, but they just need to finish off. Um, yeah, that, that, that's it. They just need the cherry yep. on top because they've got everything else. All right, give me their strength uh, of schedule. One day, fun one, Jeb. Yeah, so this is ranked from a few different websites, and I've gone through, but – Number one, if you're ranked, you have the easiest schedule coming into the 2024 season. 18th would be ranked the hardest. Yep. The Brisbane Lions, Jeff, are ranked 18. Oh, they have the hardest schedule. The hardest schedule of the AFL. I find that funny because then when I look at their fixture, I don't, I can see why, yeah, it is hard, but I actually don't find it. Yeah, anyway. So we've got notable home games, notable away games. Give me the notable home games, Das. So, Jev, my other screen just went off. What do you have for this first one? Why yeah, get it back so up? All I wrote was their first two home games, they play the Blues and then the Pies at the, at their first two home games. So they're bloody hard home games. But apart from that, do you even need to actually look at their home games? They'll probably go 11-0 and at home again. I can't see anyone beating them. Uh, my phone's absolutely cooked. I don't have that one. But, no, Jev, them at home are – Unbelievable, but actually, as I said, going through and doubling up on those games and especially like home and away, they just – they there's no easy games in this league anymore. No. But the good thing is a lot of those games which they are doubling up on, they do get them at home and they do get a lot of good teams at home. So you'd like to think that they can get through a little bit more and like 18th hardest rank, there's, they've got all – no matter how many stats they do every single season – there's so many whether they think Hawthorne's going to be a bad side yep. and then they're impossible to play against. So yep. as I said, it's just a stat to where they think. Um, where do you have their floor? So we're going to go through where we see their – Quickly, think notable, they're going to finish. notable away games just quickly. So yep. all I wanted to look at is who and when they play on the MCG, Das. That's all I cared about with the Lions. And it's round five, they play the Ds at the G – and yep. then round 23, they play the Collingwood Magpies at the MCG in a grand final rematch. So that's like, that is so exciting. They'll, that, they'll have that game circled. They know how good they're going to be. Sure. They know they're going to be top four again. They're going to have Collingwood round 23 at the G. This is our grand final dress rehearsal. We cannot go and lay an egg like we did at Hawthorne at the MCG in 2023. Like that's the, that's the one. It's all I wrote for notable away games. Um, I love it. That, that's then, all it has to be. But only two, Jev, and that is always going to be the knock. To win the flag, you're going to win in the G. Yeah. And then, yeah, their floor of wins. So I just wrote, out of the 11 games at the Gabba, if they had their worst year, they'd go 8-3, and three, maybe 9-2 and two at home. Like, they're just too good there. And then if they lost to GWS, Adelaide, Port, Gold Coast, say the Pies on the road – their floor is dead set, a 7-8 loss side. I'd be shocked if with anything lower than like 14, 15 wins. What did you write for that? Out of their floor, 13 and 10. Yep. So teams that finished 13 and 10 last year or thereabouts, the Blues, the Saints, the Giants, the Swans, and the Dogs, all yep. pretty good sides if they happen to get a few injuries or they just, as I said, because of the strength of schedule, they might lose a few more. They're definitely making finals. I cannot see them not winning finals, but you could still be a sixth ranked side and finish 13 and 10. It's a tough league, Jeb. As I said, that's why I say it's their floor. I see them at the minimum winning 13 games. What do you got for their ceiling of wins, Darth? The ceiling, Jeb, I think 
I don't, I'm not sure that they've improved in the off season. Like I, I don't see them like they finished second. I see them finishing the same as last year. I think 17 and six is a is a ceiling season for them with the league always getting better. You think if you're on the top, you're the top dog. Everyone's coming after yeah. you. 18 wins, I'm not sure they're going to get. I see them 17 and 6, pretty much the same as last year, as a ceiling. I've got their ceiling dead set, a 20 plus win team. <laughs> like, wow. Just looking at the list and just like the way they're going to be aligned. Oh, uh, yeah. I can see them being a 20 plus win team. Doesn't mean I think they will be, but I could see them being a 20 plus win. So over under, talk to me. I think judging off that. They'll be thereabouts from where they were last year. I think their line is going to be 16 and a half. I reckon their line's going to be 17 and a half. And I've got them winning 18 games, I reckon. What about you? Yeah, I've got them. Well, I've got them thereabouts. So around 16 to 17, give or take. Obviously, you've gone the the heavier, about 18 games. I've gone there. If their line's 16 and a half, Jev, we're going over. We're going so far over. They're going to be fucking. have you got a hot take on the Brisbane Lions, Dars? I do, Jeff. I absolutely love this player. And sometimes he just needs – you know what he needs? He needs someone just to fucking yell at him. Just someone. I see them. I had them as the highest scoring team in the AFL last year. I can just see this guy absolutely ripping it to shreds. They just need to get into him. Joe Danaher to win the Coleman, Jeff. Yes. That is hot. He's – some games he comes out and kicks nine, eight, nine, ten, but you're just like, oh, whatever. If they, he just needs to fire up more. If he can do that more consistently on a on a consistent basis, I no way that he uh, can't win the Coleman, Jeff. I love that. What about you? I reckon there is no way in hell they do not. No, how do I say this? They are playing the prelim final at the Gabba again, Das. The prelim final is getting played at the Gabba, and that is an absolute lock. So what they do from there is up to them, but their list is stacked and ready to win a flag. Lock it in. Prelim at the Gabba Saturday afternoon. Might be against the Blues, might be against the Swans, but it will be at the Gabba. Now, Jeb, a question without notice. I'm not sure if you can see, but I'm already sweating because of this question. But question without notice, is Chris Fagan on the hot seat? I... I don't even if, know. If, if they don't win the flag, if they don't win a flag, sorry. Is Chris Hagen on the hot seat if they do not win the flag this season? I don't know if you can call it a hot seat. I think you're going to have to call it an old seat. I think he's just old as fuck. If they don't win the flag this year, his crickety old rocking chair will break. And, yeah, I, if they don't win the flag this year, he will not be the coach in 2025. What do you reckon? It definitely puts on pressure. If they have a sub like floor ceiling, as we said, like a 13 10 get knocked out of the finals, he's gone. Yep. Like it's definitely going to give him more time. So like Ken Hinckley got an extension because he won like what 10 in a row, whatever that was. But wins will keep you in a job. If they're if we see a coaching mismatch or like a team that just hasn't organized themselves before a big game, almost like a McCarthy did against like this week against his old team. It's like, what the fuck were you doing? Like yeah. if they just come out and get dog walk, like they did against Geelong in that prelim, like obviously they were cooked, but they're just like, What happened? Yeah. Like do you guys even prepare? Yeah. If that happens again, because in those big moments he's had a lot of times where he's choked, Jev, I do not see him coaching within the next two years. I think he's got two more years. That's it. Breath of fresh air within that side. My question without notice, just quickly, Charlie Cameron kicked 59 goals and was all Australian. If I set his line at 58 and a half goals, would you take the over or the under? Oh. 58 and a half. It's a big season, Fuck. 58 from a small forward. It's, it's like 200, 200 big goals a game. I want to say over, but it's a but if I'm put but if I'm putting money on it, I would put money on the under just because it's a lot. Like I, I think it's a lot of goals. Yeah, is there a chance he finally drops off this year, or has he got one more prime year left? How old is he? Thirty one. Thirty two. He he is. No, I've got it. I've got it here. He is twenty nine. Yeah, he's got another prime year. I'm going to go over 50. He's going to dominate again. I'm going to go over 58 and a half to us. 58 and a half. So our big takeaway, Jeff, if their line is 16 and a half, we're going over they're playing, 17 and a half. They're playing at the Gabba in, on the prelim again. 
If you can beat him at the, pre- at the Gabba, good on you, but they are going back to the Gabba on the prelim. It's a good deck. All right, that is our yeah. Brisbane preview. Hopefully, we've gone through most of the stuff. Coming up next, we've got a couple of big sides. Carlton, Collingwood, Essendon, <laughs> Fremantle. Oh, Jesus. Let's go. See you, Darcy. See you soon. All right, well done. <laughs>